Hey, it's Michael, and today I'm excited to show you this new Bean to Brew coffee machine that I got recently. This is the Chibo Bean to Brew uh, machine and is, you know, let's just call it an espresso machine. But it'll also make you a great cup of coffee, and it does that by making espresso and then adding hot water to it. You might call it an Americano, you might call it a Lungo, whatever you want to call it. It's a coffee-based drink, and I think it's just awesome. Now, we all know there are so many different ways to make coffee. And if you are a true coffee nerd, you probably have a fancy schmancy espresso machine that might have cost up to $5,000 or more. Now me, that's out of my budget, so I usually drink French press. Uh, I love pour overs. But I do have a lot of different ways to make coffee in my house, everything from a mocha pot that I do on the stove to just your basic drip coffee, uh, whatever. I just love coffee and whatever is the most convenient. I've even used Nespresso machines and Keurig machines. But you know, this right here, this has really become my favorite because it makes about as good espresso as you can make at home without spending lots of money. And it's very easy to operate. The upkeep of the machine is minimal and you just have to clean it out once in a while, a couple times a week, maybe you know, wipe out some uh, stray coffee grinds from the inside. I'm gonna show you all that in this video, or if not in this video, one of my next videos. I don't want this video to be too long. So let me get to the review of this right now, the Chibo Bean Brew Machine. That's really awesome. Here is the machine. I think it's quite attractive. Uh, let's get all the essential information out of the way, first of all. This machine is seven inches wide. It's uh, gonna be about 15 and a half inches long, and it's gonna stand about just a little less than 12 and a half inches tall. So it is gonna be pretty easy to fit under most people's kitchen cabinets, just like I have here. Now, one thing I will say, the water reservoir, which is located in the back, this has to lift straight out. So you are gonna have to spin the machine around in order to put more water in here. Uh, although you would think that you might be able to just pour water in without pulling this out, that is not advisable because if you were to miss and get water inside the machine, that wouldn't be a good thing. So they do advise that you pull this out and the way you do that is you just spin the machine around to the side easily like this and the water reservoir just lifts straight out. And then there is a filter in here which you can remove and clean that periodically. So the water reservoir has a capacity of 37 ounces. Now the beauty of this machine is that it uses whole beans and it will grind the beans and then make your espresso. So here is the bean hopper up here and this also because it has a burr grinder built right into it there are adjustments up here so you have five different levels of coarseness and I have mine set on level number two however if I wanted a coarser grind I could move it up to level five or four or three or if I wanted a finer grind I could move it down to the first level but mine is set on two right now you cannot adjust this unless the grinder is actually operating and that is uh, simply because it is a burr grinder and, and because there are beans in there uh, you can't adjust the closeness of the two burrs when the machine is not running. That's simply a mechanical issue that that is why that is the case. Now this holds uh, about five ounces of beans. Now they also ship this machine with a extension which you can put on here and this would let you put uh, almost a full bag of beans or uh, about 10 ounces of beans. You know, the beans that I get from my local roaster are 12 ounce bags. So that's why I said almost a whole bag. Uh, it's really important anytime you are making espresso, please, please, please use freshly roasted beans and you want to grind them. Uh, this is a local roaster where I live, Black Crow Coffee. Awesome coffee. If you're ever in St. Petersburg, Florida, check them out. Uh, they are not sponsoring this video by any means, but they're just great coffee that I love. So get your uh, freshly roasted beans. And also uh, one thing is you do not want to use a very oily bean. Now you can see these are fairly uh, dry. They're uh, not oily, they're not shiny beans. You wouldn't want to get like a uh, really oily French roast bean. And that's not just for this machine, that's basically any uh, automatic machine. They just do not like oily beans because the beans will jam up the mechanism. So you want to use a light roast, medium roast, just don't use a really dark oily 
uh, bean in your in your machine here. So that is where the beans go, and then the lid does have a little rubber gasket around it, silicone, I guess, and that just helps seal it up so that you don't get a lot more air in there than you normally would. Uh, fresh beans are your friend in the coffee world. On the side here, we have a access panel, and this just flips open like this. Now this is actually, this is the coffee brewer mechanism. And let me just pull this out and show it to you because it's kind of fascinating the way this machine works. So the coffee is ground and then it goes into this top part here and then it gets compressed and then hot water is forced through there under pressure and that's how you make espresso. It's hot water going through finely ground coffee at about nine bars of pressure and that's what makes espresso and that's what helps create the crema as well. Now crema is simply the carbon dioxide escaping from the beans and that's why you want to use fresh beans, freshly roasted coffee because if you have old stale beans uh, all the carbon dioxide pretty much will be out of the beans at that point and you'll just you get very little crema and it just won't taste very good because uh, the peak of the flavor is long gone at that point. So anyway, that's the uh, coffee brewer mechanism and that just snaps in, pushes in and snaps into place. And then uh, you do remove this periodically to clean it and you can actually run this underwater to get all the loose coffee grounds out of there. And the cover just goes back on like that. Now on the front of the machine we have the drip tray and uh, this is removable of course and you just move the tray, you take the tray off in order to pour out any spilled coffee that might be in there. Um, and this has a slight amount of magnetism, so it attaches to the machine, it sort of draws itself and is held on by some magnets, so that's kind of nice. And then down here we have this, this removes. Now this will catch uh, little drips of water that might be dripping from the mechanism every once in a while. And this is also where the coffee grounds get ejected into. Now this will eject a puck of coffee uh, once the machine has finished brewing and this will hold about 10 of those pucks. So this does have to re be removed periodically and uh, basically this will give you an alert up on the top that it is time to empty, empty that. How does it know it's full? It's basically just a timer. After 10 coffees, then that alert will pop up there. Now, I mentioned that you have to clean the machine periodically. Well, that's the way you do it, is you just remove that. You take this lid off, you remove the brewer assembly, and that lets you get your hand in here with a paper towel, and you can just remove any coffee grounds that might be laying on the bottom. Now they do give you a little brush to help you clean this out if you want to use that. I don't really use it. I just use a damp paper towel, stick my hand in there, and I can get it nice and clean. Then just put it back together and you are ready to start making some coffee. On the side of the machine, this is the main on-off button, so you just push this to turn the machine on. Let me spin this around. When you first turn on the machine for the very first time, uh, or after a few days, um, it will eject about an ounce and a half of water, and that just cleans the mechanism out. Now, the other benefit of that is it also heats up your cup. So I always recommend that even if it doesn't eject water right off the bat, this is the hot water dispenser button right here. You just push this button, you notice a nice LED lights up so you can see everything happening. And just let a little bit of water come out. It's actually turn off after about 1.7 ounces of water comes out. And uh, this is really hot water. So actually, um, I do have a digital thermometer here and I just want to measure the temperature of this water to let you know. Now, the first one might not be as hot as the second one will be, but this is measuring right now about 153 degrees. So let me just spin this around to get this glass nice and hot, and then I'll do it one more time, and this will probably be a little bit hotter. I measured it before, and it was about 160. So actually, this is coming out at 174 175 
So the brew temperature is actually going to be a little bit hotter than that. But once it gets into the cup, once it goes through everything, in my cup it is about 174 when it first hits that cup. So that's why you want to make sure your cup is hot because that is going to keep your espresso hotter once you start to drink it. Now this spout, this spout will move up and down to fit the size of your cup. And if you have a tall travel mug, you can even get a travel mug in there by moving the drip tray out of the way. And that lets you tip a travel mug up in there. So that's really convenient. And you can see I have a, this is a big Yeti travel mug fits easily under there. So if you want to make yourself two big coffees in order to fill your travel mug, you can easily do that. And then if you just want to use your basic espresso cup, then you can just lower this down and there you go. So to make an espresso, all you have to do is push the espresso button. There's also what they call a coffee boost button here. This has a little plus sign on it. That will actually grind a little more coffee into the brewer. So the espresso will use about 11 grams of coffee. And when you push the coffee boost button, that is going to increase that to about 13 grams of coffee. So if you like it strong, push that boost button. Otherwise, just push the espresso button. What I love about the machine is it does a pre-infusion. That little sound you heard right there, that was putting hot water into the grounds. It'll just sit there and pre-infuse for a few seconds, and then the actual extraction takes place. Now, this develops a beautiful crema. Now, these beans were roasted uh, about two weeks ago, and so they're still really fresh, and you just get a very, very nice crema developing. An espresso shot is going to be two ounces. This will make two ounces of espresso, and you can change that volume if you want, but look at that crema. Beautiful. Now, like many other machines, this includes uh, Nespresso machines. Uh, if you press and hold this button and continue holding the button until the volume that you want is in the cup and then release the button, that will set a new volume for that particular button. But default, like I said, is two ounces. Now, if you want to make a regular coffee, that would be the second button, and that is going to make four ounces. And then this is a large coffee, and this is basically using the same amount of espresso, but it's just adding more water to it, and this is going to make six ounces. Again, you can change the volumes of these by pressing and holding it while it is making that amount. When I make a regular coffee or a large coffee, I always use the coffee boost, and in other words, that is going to use a larger amount of ground coffee, 13 grams. So especially when you're making a six ounce coffee, uh, that extra coffee grounds is really going to help uh, give that a, a, a more bold flavor. Now that I have made a coffee, let me show you the coffee puck that gets ejected. Now we've kind of hard to see this because of my lighting, but Let's see if I can fish one of these out of here. Oh, there we go. That wasn't too bad. So that is basically your puck of coffee. And it's actually pretty dry. So this machine actually does a very nice job, in my opinion, of making espresso. So that is it. That is the Chivo Bean to Brew coffee machine, espresso machine. I think for the price, this is probably one of the best values out there. And before I go, I just want to show you the fineness of the grind that you get with this. So this is actually the grind that is coming out of this at the two setting. And you can see this is a very nice, extremely consistent, fine grind. And I could even make this a little bit finer if I wanted to. But I found for me, this is, this is the best setting for me, is the setting of two. But that is a very nice grind, and that is because this does have a burr grinder in it. So that is it. If you have any questions about the Chibo uh, Bean to Brew coffee maker, leave the comments down below. I'll answer any questions that you might have. I'm going to make a follow-up video of this that goes into a little more detail about the maintenance and some similarities this actually has to another uh, super automatic. I don't call this a super automatic. I call it an automatic because in my mind, a super automatic would also have a milk 
frothing feature. This particular model does not. So thanks a lot for watching. If you have any questions, like I said, just leave a comment down below. I'll answer it if I can. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you the next time. Bye.